Today sees the AMD Ryzen 9000 series CPUs launching, and AMD have done it in two parts, with Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 7 reviews going live today, and Ryzen 9 parts going live a little later in the month. Now we've managed to get our hands on the Ryzen 7 9700X, a CPU that comes in with the same core and thread count as its predecessor, the 7700X, as well as being 700 megahertz slower. But before we get into that, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. Hello mate, you all right? Yeah, just got all the bits from my banging new gaming PC. Just got to put it together. It's going to be so much better than yours. Oh, right. What did you get then? The latest Intel 12th gen processor, a feature packed motherboard and 32 gig of DDR4 memory. See, miles ahead of yours. <laughs> you, you realize that board needs DDR5 memory, don't you? Don't tell me you went and bought the wrong stuff. DDR4 is so 2014. I can't believe you was that stupid. <gasps> what? No, you're joking. What should I get then? For me, I'd be looking at Corsair's newest Vengeance DDR5 kits. Or if you're wanting that all important RGB, then go for the Dominator Platinum RGB. Oh, you are a lifesaver. Thanks. But where can I find out more? By clicking the link in the description below, of course. <laughs> you call me the stupid one. Okay, so first things first, I want to address the elephant in the room. You may or may not have seen that we posted on social media just under a week ago about how we weren't getting sampled for this launch. And at the time of filming this, well, it's less than 24 hours until the embargo launch time. So we've had to scramble things together pretty quickly without looking to reduce our benchmarks down. So you can expect our usual in-depth run of tests as well as a ton of content on this chip in the coming weeks with memory scaling, a full 42 game suite of tests and some head to heads too. So make sure you stick around for that. That side, we were able to source a chip. And here we are with the 9700X, a CPU that on paper doesn't seem all that kind of dissimilar from the Ryzen 7 7700X, apart from what I said earlier, 700 megahertz slower. Now, specs wise, they're both packing eight cores. They're both sporting 16 threads. And from a first glance, the 4.5 gigahertz base clock of the 7000 series CPU seems wildly more powerful than this, well, shiny new Ryzen 7 9700X. So are we actually expecting AMD to have nerfed us with this new Zen 5 based CPU? Well, there are some areas that it actually does come out on top. Yes, the base frequency comes in at 3.8 gigahertz, a pretty staggering 700 megahertz slower than its predecessor, but it does come in with a boost clock of up to 5.5 gigahertz. Though even then, that's only 100 megahertz faster than the 7700X. So it doesn't sound all that impressive. So hey Andy, what gives? Why, if I'm on Zen 4, should I upgrade to this? And why, if I'm on maybe something older, don't I just upgrade to a 7700X instead? Well, aside from the faster 5600 megahertz JDEX supported memory speed and the 65 watt TDP compared to 105 watts on the 7700X, there's much more going on underneath the hood. Firstly, we're now rocking a four nanometer process from the CPU cores, a novel move forward from the five nanometer application that we saw on the 7700X. Though the IO is still sporting an older six nanometer process, much like the 7000 series. But thanks to that change in terms of fabrication to the CPU cores, the transistor count has managed to increase by a pretty astounding 27%, now at 8.315 million, all while keeping the die size essentially the same. So much of the same, but also some slight differences, which is where our expected extra performance should, at least in theory, come from. Due to some tweaks under the hood, AMD are actually now claiming a 16% improvement in IPC, along with refinements thanks to the new architecture, meaning better efficiency in terms of energy and better enhancements in terms of AI capabilities. We now also have better and faster Expo based memory speeds and new motherboards on the way with the new X800 series range launching next month. Though that is more about features and less about any extra added performance. So with that out of the way, let's get into those glorious benchmarks. Now, speaking of performance, let's jump into it. To test, we used our AM5 test system consisting of an MSI X670E ACE motherboard with the latest BIOS. We also used 32 gig of G-Skill Trident Z5 Neo 6000 megahertz CL30 memory. And for all of our testing, we used an Inno3D RTX 4090 iChill X30C to rid the system of any GPU based bottlenecks. 
We also use the latest version of Windows 11 and with the latest drivers, and as we're looking at CPU performance today, all of our gaming tests will be focusing on 1080p, as this is where the CPU utilization is at its highest. We've tested the 9700X along with older AMD processors and current generation Intel processors in a smattering of synthetic tests, as well as 13 games to show how good or not the 9700X is in a variety of applications, as well as games. And as mentioned, we will be putting this through the gauntlet of 42 games in an upcoming feature, so make sure you're subscribed for that, because that will be coming up very soon. Starting things off with 3D Mark Time Spy, and well, there really isn't much in it when looking at the uplift from the 7700X to the newer 9700X, at just over 1% in the overall score. So could be argued identical due to margin of error. We do, however, see a larger gain of 4% in the CPU score, moving up from the previous generation, but for the extra cost involved in buying the 9700X at $359, well, it's not exactly off to a great start in our first synthetic benchmark test, though it does put it not too far behind the Ryzen 9 7900X, so I guess silver linings. As we move on to Blender, again, the most stark comparison I can make is comparing the 9700X to its predecessor, the 7700X. And again, it's here where we do see an uplift, but nothing of significance at under 3%, which again would still be argued as margin of error. And we chalk that up as, well, practically identical, as it's nothing that you'd notice in real world tasks anyway. Moving on to Corona and we see a pretty measly 2 seconds shaved off the render time, with the 9700X now matching the time of the 7800X 3D, which before we've even got to the gaming performance, you know should be the stronger contender. So I'm struggling to find a reason to recommend the 9700X at this stage, though it is early in our benchmarks and we're muddle on through. In V-Ray, we start to see a slightly healthier improvement over the 7700X with 7% 7 more V-samples, though how this relates to real-world ray tracing, we're showing our gaming tests. But if modelling using V-Ray, it could save you a bit of time in your final render, but again, not anything of huge difference, especially when factoring in the extra cost involved. As we move on to Cinebench R23, again we see a small uplift, but you're probably starting to see a bit of a trend that, while the performance does increase, it's by very negligible amounts, seeing a multi-core score increase again by just under 3%. In terms of the single core score, it sounds a lot more impressive with a 12% uplift, but as we're dealing with a lower score in general, a percentage increase can sound larger than what it actually is. In our last synthetic benchmark, we have Geekbench, and if you hadn't guessed it, in terms of multi-core performance, we're again at just under 3%, going from the 7700X to the 9700X. While single core again sees much better, with a score of 2536, which is a pretty hefty 19% above the 7700X. So who knows, but maybe we could see some stronger uplifts in gaming performance, given how many games are geared for more strong single-threaded performance, opposed to being able to utilize mass amounts of cores and threads. So speaking of gaming and starting things off with a Playtale Requiem on the Ultra preset, and sadly we only see a 1% increase in performance over the 7700X, though looking at the rest of the CPUs tested, it does seem that we're somewhat limited, especially on the AMD platform, where even the 7800X 3D comes in matching the performance of the new Zen 5 CPU. In Cyberpunk, there really isn't much to say. In fact, the 7700X actually outperforms the 9700X by a single frame per second. Though with such a margin, we'd call it identical anyway, and it just goes to show that the extra 100 MHz boost clock really doesn't do anything for the new Ryzen 7 in this game. Well, at least on these settings. Changing the settings slightly by enabling ray tracing does have an effect though, as the 9700X comes in with 88 frames per second, which is a marginal 6% improvement over its predecessor. Though it's still no match for the likes of the i7-14700K, which funnily enough is the CPU that AMD were aiming to compete against with this new Zen 5 based chip. F123 gives us such high frame rates that the average user is unlikely to ever notice a difference anyway, even with big improvements. Whereas smaller improvements just don't add any argument for buying this new chip. And that's exactly the case when we look at the difference between the 7700X and this shiny new 9700X, which packs another 2% performance. While our testing showed this consistently coming in around the same, I'd still, at such a low level, deem this as margin of error. And again, I'm really struggling to tell you to go and buy the 9700X. 
Hogwarts Legacy shows a smaller 6% improvement moving from Zen 4 to Zen 5, which is still nice to see, but again, the disparity for the amount of extra performance you get versus the extra cost of having the 9700X just doesn't make all that much sense. Especially if you're looking for a CPU for gaming, as the 7800X 3D, albeit slightly more expensive again, makes much more sense. Spider-Man keeps the momentum, though does drop slightly with a generational improvement of 8%, which just shows the 9700X in an even worse light. Again, the 7800X 3D seems the better buy, or even something like the Ryzen 5 7600X, which at these high frame rates the difference wouldn't be noticeable, but the cost saving to your wallet would be, and could be used on other components to improve your system. Enabling ray tracing sees the margin between the 7700X and 9700X drop even further, with the newer Zen 5 CPU sitting just 6% faster than the Zen 4 based equivalent. This also only puts the 9700X 7% faster than the 7600X, which is a much more affordable CPU in comparison. So in terms of value for money, which we'll be looking at shortly, it just falls a bit short. Microsoft Flight Sim shows our biggest uplift moving from the 7700X to the 9700X of just over 13%. This is more in line with what AMD were claiming and is nice to see, especially in a game that is so CPU intensive. Sadly, it's still below where you'd expect it to be based on the cost factor alone, though given the fact that this is the newest product on the market, you will be expected to pay the early adopter tax, making it well, not great value for money, at least right now. Ratchet & Clank is next up and there really isn't much to say for this one, as the 7700X and 9700X are separated by just a single frame per second, at 201 and 202 FPS respectively. Considering we have an IPC improvement of 16% and a faster boost clock, albeit of 100MHz, it doesn't make one single bit of difference to the gaming performance in this title, and I think, for the money, there's much better offerings on the market. Enabling ray tracing and it's much more of the same, small but negligible differences and no real answer to those running a Zen 4 based CPU like the 7700X, to have the want or need to upgrade, especially when the 9700X only packs another 2% more performance in this title. I really wanted more for the 9000 series but I fear that for me and many people on the market it just doesn't do enough. Remnant 2 sees a 12% uplift, which again sounds good, but in the realistic world of looking at value for money, things still don't line up as you'd want them to. Even more so when you look at other CPUs on the market from both AMD and Intel that offer better performance for not much more money over and above the 9700X. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is our second to last game and is quite a CPU intensive title, but again, it's all a bit of a letdown. While the performance on the 9700X is good at 231 frames per second, the increase in performance just doesn't warrant the extra cost over the 7700X, giving us just 3% extra performance. Considering the 7000 series will likely start dropping in price, making something like the 7700X even better value, while this new CPU gets left by the wayside. So really, the decision is yours, but I know what I'd be going for. Lastly, in Starfield, if you hadn't guessed by now, the performance that the 9700X displays is disproportionate to the retail price, at least in comparison to the competition, whether that be from itself with the 7700X or the i7-14700K, which conveniently packs another 11% more performance for 11% more cost, which actually makes a bit more sense, unlike what we've seen here today with the value to performance argument from the 9700X, or the lack thereof. So. Where to start? I mean, I'm at a bit of a loss because this is meant to be the next generation and it just doesn't feel like it is. This feels like much of the same. I would have actually been happy if AMD called this the 7700 XT or Ryzen 7 7750X or just something else because the increase in IPC and other refinements just don't do enough. I always thought that the specs of this were, well, a little out there, a little odd. The fact that the clock speed is 700 megahertz lower than its predecessor is an odd move. And it kind of seems that AMD are happy to focus on the energy efficiency side, instead of honoring a reason for consumers to actually go out and buy it. Because, well, I can tell you now, energy is an important factor, but it's never at the forefront of a gamer or enthusiast mind. That is solely reserved for performance and cost. Energy efficiency is just, somewhere else behind all of that. Now, speaking of cost, it's always worth looking at the overall averages and the cost per frame, because that's where you can really get a full picture as to what's going on with things. 
And it's here where in terms of average FPS across the 13 games that the 9700X comes in just over 4% faster than the 7700X. Which after talking and liaising with other media outlets and other YouTubers, well, that's not too far off from what they have, and obviously will be game dependent. But it seems that even then, the range is from between 1% faster and 4% or so faster. So I guess at least we're right on the money for that. Now, the thing that isn't right on the money, however, is the pricing in terms of cost per frame. The 7700X admittedly isn't the new kid on the block, but is the CPU that is being superseded, and that's where, you know, this new processor comes in. And the 7700X comes in with a cost per frame of $1.89, which is, in all honesty, pretty impressive when you consider that the likes of the i7 14700K comes in at $2.38 per frame. And while the 9700X does beat that at $2.25 per frame, I just feel like it's too much considering how much extra performance you don't really get. Like I mentioned earlier, with any new product like the Ryzen 7 9700X, you will be paying the early adopter tax, and that's just a given. But generally you also pay more, but you also get more. And with this, it's just not there. Heck, you could save money if you're still on AM4 by simply upgrading to a 5800X 3D and getting that extra performance from what you're at least on now and still come in cheaper than buying a 9700X along with a new motherboard, DDR5 memory, the whole new platform. That's where the extra cost also comes involved if you are looking at upgrading from maybe AM4 to something like this. There's certainly choices to be made right now and I think, I guess the clear one for AMD is drop the price of the 9700X to a maximum of, I'd say around $320. Ideally, even actually lower than that. Then there's the argument for buying it based on the relative performance, because in all honesty, apart from a CPU that's gonna run a bit more efficiently, I don't feel like you're getting anything else for your money over a Ryzen 7000 series CPU, like the 7700X. So maybe it's, I don't know, back to the drawing board for AMD on this one. And yeah, that's going to about wrap it up for this one. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, a like and a sub to the channel would be amazing. And if you love what we do, then consider supporting us over on Patreon, where you'll get access to exclusive behind the scenes content, a super special area on our Discord, access to our testing data, and much, much more. The link is, as always, down below. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.